Hernandez in a title bout. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Fontempo along with Tony Page. Fans jamming. We're in, in Corpus Christi, Texas to see the professor, Azuma Nelson, against the lanky, good boxing, Gennaro Hernandez. And you get a look at the belt they'll be fighting for. Nelson coming in as the champion. And let's take a look at how they match up on the tail of the tape. Nelson, the professor, 38. Hernandez much younger at 30. Hernandez with a big height and reach advantage. And they're just below the junior lightweight championship limit. And it is Nelson's junior lightweight title on the line tonight. Let's get the introductions from Mark Biro. Top rank incorporated in association with TVKO and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This Bud's for you presents main event, 12 rounds for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Ring officials assigned by the World Boxing Council, attending president Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Mauricio Moreno. Your judges at ringside are from Paris, France, Alfred Asado, from London, England, Richie Davies, and from Dickinson, Texas, Gail Van Hoy. Your referee for this event from Dallas, Texas, Lawrence Cole. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my right, wearing the white trunks, blue trim. He weighs 123 quarter pounds. His professional record: 34 victories, one defeat, one draw. He has 17 wins by way of knockout. He hails from the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Nelson and Hernandez in the WBC. The three knockdown rule not in effect, nor is the standing eight count. A fighter can be saved by the bell in the final round. Ten points to the winner of a round, nine or less to the loser. Only the referee can stop the fight. Doctors have a lot of input. There is the professor, Azuma Nelson, defending his WBC 130-pound title. And Gennaro Hernandez former title holder in this division moved up fought Oscar De La Hoya and now is back down Azuma Nelson is a true ro wo road warrior Dave he goes all over the world to fight coming in different fighters backyard doesn't bother him he, he doesn't care he can fight once a year and just be as effective as he was in the previous year defying all types of regimens about rhythm and intense training and staying active he's the exception to all those rules look at the height difference right there Hernandez with a plus six inches advantage in, in height 
and, and six inches in reach. I mean, that, you can't teach that. That's devastating. Nelson's going to have to throw a lot of punches, get inside, and work on that long body of Hernandez. Hernandez can try to win this fight one-handed. Good jab. He'll have the right hand to show, but the left hand is going to be his ticket, especially that jab. Both fighters, very, very good boxers. But with that height advantage, what, what Nelson has to do is he, he's ha he has to move his head. He can't let Hernandez get that jab going. Come inside, try and throw a left to the body, see what kind of shape Hernandez is in. Hernandez, as you said, could win this one-handed. Just pop that jab out there. Hernandez, very slick. Good jabber, good mover. Very upset at the reaction to his loss to De La Hoya. His nose was broken in more than 20 places by De La Hoya. And he feels that he was given a rough time, both in the media and especially in the Hispanic community after that. So this is his opportunity to come up with the title. There's a lot on the line for him. And he is the fan favorite here. Everybody wants to see him do well, but he has to stick to his game plan. Use his left jab, try and disrupt the rhythm of Nelson. Older fighter, but uh, very experienced. Once he gets on a roll, it's hard to break it. Azuma Nelson, very dangerous. Knows so many tricks. And here in the first round, he's been trying to attack Gennaro Chicanito Hernandez. But finding that the jab of Hernandez is pretty formidable. Hernandez looks pretty good on his feet also, Dave. Good balance. Gennaro Hernandez puts a good first round away against Azuma Nelson in this championship bout. On him. Round two, Gennaro Hernandez and Azuma Nelson for the WBC. 130 pound title. Good opening round by Gennaro Hernandez who is thus far showing you how to jab. We've seen many fights, Tony, where guys did not take advantage of their height advantage. They did not take advantage of the jabbing ability. We're seeing Hernandez do those things. He's keeping his distance. He's making Nelson come to him. Good right hand by Hernandez. He has to capitalize, but when your man's off balance, if you're sticking to one type of punch, you gotta throw something else because you can't always reach him with just one punch. Warning about the holding. Right hand, good combo here by Hernandez, getting good leverage. And the left hook, which he digs in nicely. Hernandez with those long arms, all his punches just straight down the pipe. Can't miss Nelson. And even when he when he misses with a left hook, a left jab, he comes back with a left hook and goes to the body. Good moves by, by Hernandez. Nelson, on the other hand, he's on the outside. He's got to figure out how to bob and weave and get inside that left jab of Hernandez and try and do what he did with that uppercut. He has to try and get him on the chin with it. Hernandez has been blessed with that good reach. There's a hook by Azuma Nelson. An uppercut from way out. In retaliation by Hernandez. Zuma Nelson trying to cut off the ring here a little bit more in the second. But it seems when Nelson does something like that, Hernandez immediately fires back. Good right hand. Hernandez very sharp. I like the fact that after he throws his punches, he brings his hands right back. He's in a position to counter anything Nelson throws. Hernandez with the jab, then the shots to the body, then more with the jab. Trying to get that jab going, but he's got a little bit longer distance to throw it because of the, the reach advantage that Hernandez has. And Hernandez is using his, his feet just to stay a little bit outside of Nelson's range and still pop him with his punches. Hernandez thus far putting on a clinic of 
using height and reach. And there's the left hand underneath the hook to Azuma Nelson. And Janeiro Hernandez has kept the professor away from him in the first two rounds of this fight. And Hernandez has to be encouraged by what he's done thus far. As we go back to Azuma Nelson's corner. And they address the professor. Oh, work on your breathing. Take a deep breath. Deep breath. We have to get a little yeah, get rhythm. A little too flat. We're waiting for the boy too much. Okay? Let's get a rhythm going. You get the belt. The belt is up here. Yeah. I won't we'll be calling all the low blows, all right? Take a deep breath. You have to find your target. The boy too close with the two rounds. So you get a little rhythm. Don't get too flat. Give me some legs. Give me some beautiful legs. Let's put a show for the boy. The target is going to be there, but you have to open the door to be able to connect. You slide in with the right hand. Pop. Get him with that hook. Jack him up. You get it up with the right hand. Come right back. Nelson trying to get in there with that left hook of his. He got him. Got Hernandez while he was pulling away, but Hernandez comes back. Trying to set him up with the right hand. Hernandez is taking his time. Very patient. And Hernandez's people... They're happy. Nelson's people telling him, you can't wait for this boy anymore. He was in acknowledgement. So the first two rounds, very good for Gennaro Hernandez. And Azuma Nelson will now try to penetrate, get inside. Nelson's corner told him, we got to get into a rhythm. Well, that's kind of easy to say if you're taller than your, your opponent. This is the other way around. You can't get into a rhythm because every time you try and shorten the distance, you're getting popped with a left and a right. The people in the corner are not the ones fighting the guy with the long arms. No. And Hernandez is very schooled. He's a veteran. Had the title. Just found out that Oscar De La Hoya was too much. But who hasn't found that out? You notice that Nelson, he's pulling away by pulling his torso back, taking his head back. And Hernandez can still reach him as he pulls away. And when Nelson does that, he's in no position to counter and try and throw another punch back. And as Nelson moves straight back like that, he also becomes a more inviting target for that right hand of Hernandez. I remember the first time I saw Azuma Nelson fight in person. I was at Madison Square Garden when he fought the late, great Mexican featherweight Salvador Sanchez. And no one knew who this kid was. And he went into the 15th round until when he got stopped. And everyone knew he was going to be a champion. Little did we know he'd be one of the great fighters of this era. And able to last 20 years <laughs> approximately after when you saw him. And even at, at age 38, he's still dangerous. is still doing the right things. He's keeping his hands up. He's blocking anything that Nelson throws. He's using his height like you're supposed to do. He's detecting Nelson coming in as Hernandez goes lefty for a second. Hernandez knows he can make this a limited war and still win it. So he does not let Nelson get in. Sorry, Dave. Sometimes the, the best game plan is just to make it simple. You have the height advantage. You have the reach advantage. Just use it. Just win and, and move on. Don't try and do too much and get yourself in trouble. Especially with a guy who, if you give him one opening, can really make you regret it. Janeiro Hernandez and Azuma Nelson come to the end of round three. And it is still Janeiro Hernandez setting the pace behind his jab, doing a good job on the outside and piling up points early in this championship bout. Hernandez has the height and reach advantage. Here he is using it. Look how he's using his, his, his footwork to get in and get out, use his punches. Nelson trying to follow him around the ring. Hernandez using the left, right, left. Good use of height, footwork, and punches. And he forces Azuma Nelson all the way back. So Nelson cannot get in and penetrate. So we start the fourth round. Dave Bontempo and Tony Page. 
Glad you're with us. The WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Title held by Azuma Nelson. He took it from Gabriel Rorellis in 1995. Nelson is, if, if he can just walk up to Hernandez and Hernandez doesn't throw that jab, Hernandez is going to be in trouble. He's Hernandez still. has been throwing that jab and that is what's kept him from seeing any type of difficulty. You don't want to give the professor an opportunity to get into the fight. So you have to throw that jab. You may have to throw it all 12 rounds, but that's what's going to be, be the difference right, right now. Keeping the distance and using your height and your jab. We see very few fighters able to sustain that jabbing style over 12 rounds. You get tired, you figure, okay, let me take a break for 30 seconds or a minute. And next thing you know, Nelson's jumping on you and you're against the ropes and you can't get your distance reestablished to use that left. Hernandez trying to dig with the hook, but is very content to be outside with the jab. Seems like Nelson is starting to get a little closer, which, but that also brings him closer to Hernandez's jab, which makes the punch seem that much harder because you're closer to it. But Hernandez has to pop it out there now. And Nelson does have to take this chance. Otherwise, Hernandez can get away with something you just saw, that uppercut from way outside. Nelson's still trying to figure out how do I get past this jab because he really hasn't had a chance to work the body. I think Hernandez has landed more body shots than Nelson. And Nelson's starting to get a little frustrated as Hernandez stays outside and is very patient. And he's starting to pick up the pace a little bit. There's some good flurries by Hernandez. Hernandez content to jab, move, and keep Nelson in a circle. More punches that Hernandez throws, he just shuts down Nelson. He can't do anything. Nice little move there by Hernandez. Turned him and hit him. Quick little shot on the right hand by Gennaro Hernandez. So Gennaro Hernandez continues to do a good job getting out in front of Azuma Nelson. Hernandez very effective when he throws combinations. He won't let Nelson get set. He just keeps throwing punches to keep Nelson off balance and confused. Good punches, good punching flurry by Hernandez. Gennaro Hernandez giving a boxing clinic as we start the fifth round. And he's doing it to the professor, Azuma Nelson, in the gold trunks. That's what's so surprising, but you would think the professor have to go to some of his old class work and doctoral studies to figure out how do I get inside past this jab with this tall man and work his body. <laughs> Thus far, uh, Gennaro Hernandez telling the professor, I don't want to go to any more of your lectures. <laughs> On the outside, being a pretty good professor himself. Good moves here by Hernandez. This is a good learning fight for any any young fighter out there you watch how Hernandez gives an angle sets and quickly throws the punch will not let Nelson get set will not let Nelson get into a rhythm like his corner wants him to do keep the jab moving go to the left hook and Hernandez has enough power to keep Nelson honest which is important too yeah Nelson has a good knockout record so does Hernandez through the first four rounds, I got Hernandez a shutout. 40-36 won all the first four rounds. Giving the professor a, a textbook clinic on how to use the jab, how to use the height. Nelson keeps coming forward. He's been hit, but not really rocked. Just keeps coming forward, though. Hernandez doing everything right from a boxing standpoint. There's a good left hook. And Nelson trying to make something happen here. Hoping that he can... Get Hernandez out of a rhythm. Even if he has to rough him up a little bit and hold and clutch. Well, that's 
what they talk about. That's what I can talk about. A fighter having a plan A, B, C, D. You got to keep trying everything. But if you only have one game plan, it's not working. You got problems. And right now, Azuma Nelson appears to be waiting for Gennaro Hernandez to make the mistake and to let up for a little bit on the belief that Hernandez cannot sustain 12 textbook style boxing rounds like this. Sometimes when you wait for a guy to falter and he doesn't falter, it's round 12 and you're 11 rounds behind. And you wonder where that time went. Now Nelson gambling a little bit, fires the left hook in, just runs in. Didn't even try to bob and weave past the jab, just fired it. So Azuma Nelson knows what is cut out for him. He's falling further behind as this one ends round five. Well, the professor usually stops his opponents, and that leads to a big winning percentage. Start the sixth round. And Azuma Nelson, Tony, fighting with more urgency as he comes out. I think he realizes he's lost a lot of rounds. I have him losing the first five, so now he's got to try and go for the knockout. Just boring in. Fernandez should be stepping back, throwing the jab, but right now, Nelson's starting to smother him. Well, if those scorecards are accurate, and I would certainly agree, then this is quite a dilemma for Azuma Nelson. He could win five of the next seven rounds and lose his title. Yeah, so he needs a, looks like a 10-8 round in there or something, or to start to wear his man down and hurt him, but he hasn't done that yet. Hernandez is fighting the same way he's been fighting since the opening belt, using the jab, using the reach, occasionally throwing a left hook to the body. It's hard to think about needing a knockout when nothing has gone right thus far. But Azuma Nelson has the ability to turn it around. We've seen him beat far younger fighters. Seen him come up with one little move, little strategy. A delightful and engaging fighter. Does not mind the long layoff between fights and doesn't show the effects, which is rare. Not fighting as a 38-year-old. Now that's his fight right there to stay on Hernandez and pound the body. Not that often he's got he's been able to get inside. Hernandez digs down to the right by Hernandez. has to go back to reestablishing that left jab because Nelson has been walking, walking right to him because Hernandez hasn't been throwing it anymore. Hernandez with the body shot behind the jab. Nelson continues to come forward. But Nelson is at least on top of him more this round. He's, he's applying the pressure. He's making Hernandez back up. But Hernandez has to stop and throw punches like he did there. But... So much time has gone by in this round already. He hasn't really done that. He's let Nelson get ahead in this round. And Zuma Nelson might be bursting out here onto the scorecards. A round that Gennaro Hernandez perhaps took off a little bit. When you have that kind of a lead, you can take a round off. But then again, you're letting an older, experienced fighter get in a roll. Hey, don't use the rope for you, sir winding down into the final moments of round six. Let's see what they say to the professor after maybe his best round of the fight. This is the seventh round. Seventh round. Come back with the right hand. And every time he turns around, turn with him. Okay? How about slide it in right here and catch him with it? Hope you've been working on it. Boom, right in the center. If the boy's covering up, bang the arm, they'll come down. And we're trying to have you all. He'll go up, bang the body. The body will be open. 
And we have, a, have Nelson being aggressive, trying to work on Hernandez. Hernandez just being very patient, trying to set up Nelson with, with one good shot. And here's Nelson coming in, takes the right hand by Hernandez. As we start the seventh round, this ring could never be small enough for Azuma Nelson. He is against a taller, lankier, speed demon here against Gennaro Hernandez, who goes lefty, righty, jabs, has excellent footwork. You said earlier, Dave, that when Hernandez fought Oscar De La Hoya, his nose was broken in 20-something places. Nelson's corner said, work on his nose. It seems like he's having trouble with it. Now, once you break a nose like that, maybe it's never, ever quite right in terms of the breathing. And that's if you break it in one place. Right. Multiply that by 22. Didn't know there were 22 places on a nose you could break. Me neither. And that was from one De La Hoya shot, an uppercut. So Hernandez has been very sensitive to the criticism arising from that. He came into that fight unbeaten, came in as a champion, and believes that all of that was forgotten based on the fact that he had to quit in the De La Hoya fight. He's a very good tactical fighter, and he's using all his expertise right now, giving, giving the professor angles, spins, all kind of different punches. Nothing to hurt Nelson yet, but enough to impress the judges. Hernandez has been hit so little, it's like there are security guards in front of his face. <laughs> He's really done a nice defensive job to this point. No punching, no punching. All right, Stop hitting the back of the hand, all right? Good job by the referee. He really hasn't had to get involved. These, these guys are professionals. They know what they're doing. That's right. Tell them what they need to know. There's a hook by Nelson. Let them do it. Don't stop the action all the time to lecture, as we've seen some referees do. Final minute of round seven. Gennaro Hernandez working on a nice lead here, but Azuma Nelson starting to close the distance. Nelson getting in there, but he's not jabbing his way in. He's just kind of walking in. He takes punches when Hernandez throws a jab. When Hernandez doesn't, he gets in, he gets a free pass right inside. So Zuma Nelson getting some hooks going. There's the right hand. And Azuma Nelson now trying to make a fight of this on the cards. He's always dangerous. And he's always in the fight otherwise. Hernandez seems to be slowing down just a little bit, not throwing that left jab. So let's see how Nelson does coming on as this fight wears along. Final seconds of round seven. Nelson coming on late. Doing some of his best work. And oh, oh, after the bell. A blatant late shot on Hernandez to the throat. What a place to be hit late. And Gennaro Hernandez. Still not up. Signaling that he was hit to the throat late. Clearly late by Azuma Nelson. Let's take a look at it. Here we have Nelson has him against the ropes, pounding away, caught him right on the throat, and it was clearly after the bell, Dave. He was pounding away, the referee was not right there, and so he got the shot late. And what happened is that Hernandez stopped defending himself when he heard the bell, and that opened it up. In the heat of battle, even if you hear the bell, don't drop your hands. Just, just stay there. Keep punching until the ref, it's the referee's job to get in and stop you. Gennaro Hernandez was told between rounds that if he was unable to continue, they would disqualify Azuma Nelson for this late shot. And he declined to take the cheap victory. And poor Hernandez, he gets hit by Nelson and then a body slam by the referee as he's trying to get out of the way. So, Gennaro Hernandez was the WBC title holder if all he said was yes. But he said no. He wanted to win this title the way you're supposed to. So despite being hit nasty on the throat after the bell in round seven, he is out there for the eighth. 
Hernandez gets to use a, a term that's not used much in boxing, classy. Classy. And after all the criticism he took for quitting against De La Hoya, he's reversed that now. Here was a guy literally handed the WBC title between rounds and says he wants to win it in the ring. I know some boxing writers wanted it wanted him to be fighter of the year based on this because you don't see this kind of class in boxing when like you said it, it, the belt would just be handed to you and you go home but he's a sportsman people forget about that he's a sportsman he wants to win it in the ring so Gennaro Hernandez now has to try and hold off a fast charging Azuma Nelson who's been motivated by the attack he put on Hernandez at the end of round seven and he had the he had the, the round one with all the work he was doing but uh, the momentum changes even though you drop a guy with a, a with an illegal punch he gives him enough chance to recuperate and get back in there Hernandez look he looks smooth he still needs to work the jab though we have a takedown here so Gennaro Hernandez gets up rough night for the young guy <laughs> first and ten at the 35 yard line after being tackled by Nelson. And will try to get through the final minute of round eight. And then the last third of this fight. Rounds nine, 10, 11, and 12. Hernandez has the style to endure these type of assaults because he is a boxer. He can stay outside and try to point his way to victory. You said earlier he could win this with one hand and just by using that left jab, he's been effective. And he's turned it over to a hook every once in a while. And showing the patience, not getting embroiled in a brawl. Now warned for holding and hitting, which has been the case a few times. Come on, let go. So Azuma Nelson coming on strong, but unable to capitalize on the sudden opening presented by his attack at the end of round seven. And so Gennaro Hernandez has withstood the assault of Azuma Nelson and has made it through the end of round eight. <laughs> round nine scheduled for 12 between Azuma Nelson, the reigning WBC 130 pound champion and Gennaro Hernandez, the very dangerous challenger. Nelson trying to turn it into a brawl right now. Trying to see if he can get uh, Nelson to just sit down and slug with him. Nelson, not, not I mean, uh, uh, Hernandez not falling for it. He's still using his footwork. Not so much the jab right now, but the footwork to make Nelson come toward him. Nelson trying to plow through the jab by Hernandez. Undoubtedly motivated by the exchange. He won at the end of round seven. And he was penalized after landing a left hook to the throat after the round. But he's on second legs here now in the sense that he could have been disqualified. But Hernandez said no. no Hernandez looks no worse to wear. He's, he's doing what he has to do, following the same blueprint. Using his, his height advantage, using his reach advantage, using the younger legs that he has. Nelson just trying to, not bobbing and weaving, just walking right toward Hernandez. When you keep your hands up that high, then smart fighter will go to your body, go to the ribs. Well, if you're Gennaro Hernandez, you're thinking that this is down to a four-rounder now. It's a short fight from here on in. Nelson really needs to make his move in the next couple of rounds. He needs to start doing something right now, Dave. I think he's, he's so far behind. There's a, there's a flurry by Nelson. But he can't put it, he can't seem to sustain it. And you get the feeling that Nelson needs a knockout to get a draw. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you can see, with Nelson being historically the skilled fighter that he is, what a good technical opponent can do to you. Especially one who is willing to stay within himself. Especially one who's six inches taller. How many fights have we done where opponents 
of the Jabbers have gotten inside because these guys don't stay with what got them there. And Hernandez has stayed with that height advantage. You know, when you have a one-inch reach advantage, it really is negligible. It doesn't mean anything. You could just, you know, it's an even fight. But when you're talking five, six, seven inches, and you don't take advantage of it, you don't use it, what's the point? You're giving it away. Nelson landed one good right hand, one of his better punches of the fight, but still has to plow to get through Gennaro Chicanito Hernandez, who now is just three rounds away from taking this by decision. Hernandez and Nelson. A look at the professor, Azuma Nelson, in search of answers against one very determined pupil, Gennaro Hernandez. Hernandez in the white trunks with the blue trim has what we would believe is a substantial lead over Nelson on the basis of his height and reach advantage. I'm Dave Bontempo along with Tony Page bringing you this championship bout. It's coming from Corpus Christi, Texas, and this has been a pro-Hernandez crowd. Very much so, and it's also pro-Hernandez in my scoring. I have him ahead 88-82. I mean, he's, it, he's just one. He's given the professor a textbook clinic on left jab, the usage of legs and, and angles. It's just very, very smart performance by Hernandez. We knew that going in, even though he, he took a lot of grief for the loss against uh, Oscar De La Hoya. He's always been a sound fighter. And Hernandez working on his redemption here in front of a very big Hispanic crowd, the state of Texas, and Corpus Christi and San Antonio in particular, very big Spanish areas. They love Oscar De La Hoya in those areas, and they've enjoyed Gennaro Hernandez tonight. So even though he's not in California in front of his home state people, Gennaro Hernandez wanted to come up big for the people in Corpus Christi, Texas tonight, and he has thus far. You know, I'm watching uh, Azuma Nelson get picked apart by, by Hernandez from outside, and even though Nelson is, is, is closer to 40, you still think if you match him with a fighter of his same height, he might do some damage. Well, the last time we saw him against somebody with relatively similar height was... Gabriel Ruelas. And he took Ruelas out in the middle rounds of that fight. Yeah. Went and knocked him down in the first round. But Nelson is at the receiving end of, of Hernandez's punches. He's not letting Nelson get on track. Not letting the professor get on his game plan or follow any kind of blueprint to victory. It's just all Hernandez. Not only has he been scoring, but maybe the best thing Hernandez has done tonight is disrupt the timing disrupt the timing of Azuma Nelson. Hernandez warned about holding and hitting, but he can afford to lose a point here. He can. Again, the way he's controlling himself in there, it's Hernandez who's in the rhythm. Never let Nelson get off into his rhythm. Big right swing here, missed by Nelson. Now he comes on strong. Got the attention of Hernandez with that. He can find opportunity at a moment's notice, but Nelson runs out of time. Here you see Nelson coming after Hernandez, but Hernandez makes him pay with that short right uppercut. Nelson trying to come in with those big right hands, trying to change the fight around. Nelson just trying, but not enough. A little bit too late. You give him any opportunity, and Azuma Nelson, no matter how badly outpointed during the course of a fight, can steal a victory from you and Gennaro Hernandez no doubt aware of that as we head into the 11th of what has been practically a flawless performance by Gennaro Hernandez and Hernandez with the basic one two a very simple over and over he just tattooed Nelson right there and I have never seen a zoom in Nelson so much in the lopsided end of a bout I have to go all the way back to his fight against Pernell Whitaker. And that wasn't as, uh, that was a little closer than this. Right. And Zuma Nelson, you can't even look at him and say, well, you know what? 
He didn't train. He fights once a year. The effects are there. He looks sharp. He does. He just can't get there. When he gets inside, he wings punches, but Hernandez is smart enough to pull back and get out of there. But I think if Nelson had to do it all over again, he would start this quick 30 seconds into the first round to see who can establish their rhythm because Hernandez got into his rhythm early, used the distance, used that jab, keeps saying it over and over, but that's, what, that's what's winning the fight for him. And it's very rare that we see a fighter stay within his limitations throughout the course of a fight. And Hernandez has been able to do that. He's been willing to do that. At some point, a guy seems to distract a little bit and want to become a puncher for a little while, but not tonight with Hernandez. Now, I think he wants the title, and uh, he knew what his game plan, which was very good, but it meant throwing that left jab, which meant he had to come in shape, and he's in shape to go to distance. And only four minutes away. One more minute here, and then that final round, and Janair Hernandez, who was hit in the throat after round seven and was in trouble. Certainly looking good now. And Azuma Nelson firing punches from everywhere, hoping that one gets lucky and finds the chin. Very desperate. Nelson's taking some good shots, but there's no swelling around his eyes or anything. He just takes a great shot. But good left hook by uh, Hernandez. Hernandez landing that hook. You look at Nelson, and he doesn't have the appearance of a guy who's way behind in the cards. Usually, guys who are way behind the cards have given up yeah. at this point of the fight. Nelson is still there. He is still viable. He is still dangerous. But he only has one round to work with. Gennaro Hernandez looks pretty well. No real problems there. The last time we have to stay as a champion. Okay. Here's Hernandez trying to set up Uzuma Nelson. Left hook right over the top. Nelson stops, comes back for more. Hernandez landing that, not from a powerful stance, as he's in a slightly defensive posture. And there is Hernandez and Nelson. Nelson, a true sportsman. His expression has not changed throughout no. the course of this bout. Don't see him bloating when he's ahead. Doesn't power when he's behind. Just sticks to his sticks to what he has to do and tries to change the outcome. Right now he's way behind. I have I have uh, Hernandez 108 100 leading Nelson. Talk about like you said he needs a knockout for to get a draw, but he's not done anything to hurt Hernandez other than the knockdown, which was an illegal knockdown to the throat back in round seven. He has not really been able to establish much of a body attack. You have to slow Hernandez first. And Hernandez has fought with technical urgency in this bout. You talked about Nelson going to the body. You have to realize it does two things. If you go to the body, you take away a fighter's legs. You also slow down his reflexes up top because his body is sore. He's not throwing those crisp punches. But Nelson's never done that to Hernandez. Hernandez just continues to throw his jab. And to his credit, Hernandez has not allowed those body shots by Nelson to get in. Over the top again goes Azuma Nelson and Gennaro Hernandez. Probably with his most proficient boxing display in a long time, maybe ever. Technically, it was flawless. He, he, he did what he was supposed to do. As we say over and over again, if you can't use your reach, what's the point? And he's used it, but he's also used his leg with the whole package. He just did so many different things, movement, the angles. He was able to, to, to keep the professor neutralized and just win it from the outside, which is nothing wrong with that. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. Gennaro Hernandez fighting for redemption in the eyes of many for the loss to Oscar De La Hoya he did not like the way he was received after that bout and subsequent fights by De La Hoya have shown that Hernandez actually gave De La Hoya one of his better bouts yeah 
So, Janeiro Hernandez rising and showing his true ability here. This has been an impressive boxing performance by Janeiro Hernandez. And based on this, he could wear the title of Professor. And I think he realizes he hasn't won. He's really not taking any chances. He's staying away from Nelson. And he can afford to lose the round if, if it comes down to that. Hernandez with the big lead. Survived a lot. Would not take the fight handed to him at the end of round seven. And now we believe he'll get it at the end of round 12. And the sportsmanship embraced by the fighters. And... Junior Hernandez was on. He was on his game uh, across the board from the opening bell to the last. And even the distraction of being knocked down and hurt to the throat. I mean, he collected himself, got himself in order, and went right back to the same game plan. And, and it, I think this goes down probably as the classiest fight of the year. Two outstanding...